the law. Thank you for this event and your focus for it. We know that when we gather together, we always have a divine agenda. Bless this webinar presentation as well as the leads who are going to attend this webinar. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a small introduction about our today's uh, speakers. I have a very pleasant duty to, of introducing our today's webinar speakers, Dr. C.M. Chodaway Rajanathan. Actually, he specialized in analytical and vaccine research. He is presently working as the Deputy General Manager and Head Analytical Development, the Kalila Healthcare Limited, Gujarat. Actually, he did MSc, PhD in Biotechnology and MBA in Social Quality Management. He is holding more than 15 years of research experience in the field of vaccine development and validation of analytical methods for the different vaccine candidates like HPV, that is human papilloma virus, DTP, hepatitis B, HIV, which include that is diphtheria, tetanus, open heart, hepatitis B, hemophilus, influenza type B, rabies, hepatitis E, typhoid bronchitis, malaria, chikungunya, IPV, reticella booster, and leishmania. He involved in complete testing and characterization of different vaccine candidates as per the regulatory requirements. Currently working on the development of DNA vaccine for SARS CoV 2. Uh, have been uh, earlier associated with the DGC India as a scientist, Indian Immunological Limited, Hyderabad, and Santa Biotechnics, uh, Hyderabad. Sir, we are uh, very glad to welcome you. Uh, let's now over the session to Dr. Cholave. Please welcome, sir. Um, thanks, Dr. Jansi, for your uh, warm introduction. Can I proceed with my presentation? Not presentation, sir, only. I can't see the presentation. All right, let's proceed. Proceed. Audible. Okay, sir. Is my uh, slides visible? No, sir, not visible. Mute, mute, Panir Kinga. No, you, you did, you mute. Kindly unmute. Kindly unmute, sir. Well. Just a minute, sir. I'm just sharing the slides. Yes, it's clear. Clear now. Clear, but not in full screen, sir. Yeah, I'm just changing it to full screen. Yeah. Is it uh, visible to all? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, good morning to all of you who are part of this uh, webinar. So, um, I just want to first let me introduce myself, uh, though there was an uh, introduction provided. So, I am Chodavil Rajanathan, so I am holding a 15 years of experience of research experience in vaccines. So uh, I think this is in continuation of the webinars that has been happening from first. So there were two speakers earlier, uh, Dr. Saravanan and uh, Dr. Prabhagran, who was already given you a uh, given all of us an uh, uh, 
uh, clear uh, information about the covid virus and its uh, pathogen uh, pathogenesis and the basics of that so my presentation will be little different uh, from their presentation where i would be capturing uh, mostly on the application part of the uh, applied research of the virus so my topic is uh, on the vaccine part where i would cover up a brief introduction about the virus which was uh, from its identification uh, in the uh, month of uh, december 2019 when it was identified to the current status of research on the development of vaccines so probably i will take up some 40 to 45 minutes to uh, complete my presentation with what is happening in the vaccine research which most of us are eager to know and waiting for to get a one, get a one which uh, at least a one vaccine we would in need of for the community so my uh, presentation will go through brief introduction the vaccine research status how regulations are there for vaccines and a conclusion so going to my first introduction slide i just thought of just capturing a brief uh, about the current status and i know everyone is tracking these numbers uh, there is a huge number which is keep on daily ticking in the um, who site and all the other uh, websites so probably i would skip these slides since it is already known to everybody and one thing which we wanted to tell about this uh, covid virus is it is a zoonotic disease which shifts from human to animals and animal to human there is an intermediate host also which is uh, playing an important role in the viral infection and i thought this would be an interesting thing which dashboard i don't know how many people see it but we as a vaccine developers look into this who site which is a path for all of us to know a daily status even students should look into this site to have more information of the of the uh, covid-19 so this was yesterday's stats and information it's it's spread all over the world and then it is a uh, little bit panicking numbers which we see on the screen which is which i took it yesterday night as i said uh, covid is not a new virus it is it has evolved from sars so there was a very good publication which was uh, cited in 2016 itself about sars and mers which are coming under the same uh, uh, family of virus coronavirus so based on that if we see it is a zoonotic it keeps on changing itself and it moves between animal to human and again human back to the animals so and it is we know that it is all pandemic now and this was the first publication on the uh, virus which was published in january in lancet which i thought it would be interesting to share it people have to read this article also get okay, if they get time the reference is already there in the slide so this was published in lancet saying about the virus which is going to be of global health concern so this was published in january in the lancet as it said yes it has become a global health concern now and we are find searching solution for the same and in the same research article this is how it came the virus evolved in december 30 and it started spreading day by day from one country to the other country and it has spread globally in a very short time of 2 to 3 months okay so this is an interesting slide i thought of just uh, sharing it so when researchers started uh, finding this virus in january when they published this were two screenshots which i am sharing it here which is initially called as wuhan seafood market pneumonia virus you will not find this screenshot now because it's been revised to sars now so the scientists themselves were really confused when the virus evolved in january so 
they didn't even knew how to name the virus because of the research keep on going so then after they identified the homology of the virus with sars then they renamed it uh, from novel corona from a one seafood market pneumonia virus to sars cov2 so it took almost more than 2 to 3 months for understanding the virus and then finding it what it is so this is an important thing for the applied research scientist to work on the virus because this really helps to identify what kind of a solution we need to find based on our earlier experience so once we found that this is like sars then it was easy for the scientists to move forward and further work on the virus my other slides will show how vaccine research went forward so this was one slide which is an interesting one which we wanted to i would like to share it because this was the whole genome sequence from the wuhan first sequence that was published with the full genome thanks for the technology which quickly helped us to know the whole genome sequence of the virus and then it was published in the ncbi site this helped the applied researchers like as the vaccine researchers to explore the virus to quickly find a solution or a vaccine for this so on the major target of this is the spike protein so you can see the flower like structure on the spikes that is visible on the virus so this becomes our target why this becomes the target for the vaccine research so here my slide shows here the molecular mechanism of the virus the first the left side picture is on the this was published on the sars but since it is a similar virus the host mechanism uh, infection mechanism remains the same and more focused on the spike protein here i have shown the three dimensional structure of the spike where it has a full length s1 and a s2 region so single s1 s2 forms into a trimeric structure to form a full spike protein so only at this structure it becomes more functional and this is the first contact with our human ace2 receptor so one we need to block this so this is a critical thing there is a prebinding domain of the spike so this is the first line of block so that's why it is very important to have both basic research and applied research so what i am talking here is how the applied research scientist were able to utilize the basic research work that was carried out so now understanding about this molecule helped us to know that the target for the preparation of a vaccine is going to be the spike protein so you can clearly see this is the human ace2 receptor which binds and this starts the first line contact with the human or the mammalian cells now directly going forward with the applied research on the vaccine development i would like to show what are the different vaccines that are being done currently in the market so this was an status review on the vaccine platforms that are being developed quickly scientists were able to develop different platform technologies which were already available because because it is it is a pandemic situation and all this more than 100 vaccine manufacturers all over the globe are working on different vaccines and majorly the vaccines are classified into these six categories so this was like earlier days we don't knew that uh, for the why for any of the virus comes probably we will take one technology two technology and we start working but in this pandemic situation it has made all the scientists to work on all the platform technologies that were available in a very short time probably in hardly in 4 to 5 months the research started within a month so all platform technologies which were established thanks for it so that helped us to quickly enter into the research so in my other slides i will show you how each of these technologies has moved forward for the covid research so the first the current stages of vaccine let me brief out the first one is the rna vaccine which you can see it 
probably my image is not that clear uh, probably people can go into the full article the citation is already there in my slide so the first vaccine is an rna vaccine the second one is a dna vaccine the third one is a recombinant vaccine and and fifth one is inactivated vaccine and next sixth one is the live attenuated vaccine so i will try to cover up it will one hour is not sufficient to capture all the uh, vaccine research but i will try to capture some of the researches that has been moved forward in the it is in the early stage of clinical trials based on the each of the platform technologies so each of the platform technologies has his own time in the preparation so as the slide represents the first one is the preparation of the material in all this technologies we need to prepare the material followed by the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 then it goes for approval followed by large scale manufacturing and then administration then the immunity so it's a big path which you see it it may be little panicking but i have some slides in my coming slides which you may feel little bit relaxed so again continuation of that the publication clearly says the advantages and disadvantages because all vaccines has its own advantages and disadvantages but interestingly looking into all we have moved forward in all the platform technologies and researches are going on all the platform technologies as i said rna dna vector live attenuated inactivated in all vaccines have moved forward adding to this there is a clear cut uh, um identification of who is making which vaccine also which is a very good uh, publication uh, review article that has been published in uh, new england journal of medicine where you can see dna vaccine which we are working as a team uh, i am one of the part of the group which is working on enzyder scheduler where we are focusing on dna vaccine so i will i can tell the status of the vaccine in the coming slides where we have moved forward also quickly it has moved forward uh, in the uh, preclinical talks so the first one is the dna vaccine where the candidate has already moved into a, a clinical phase 1 which people would have read also in lot of newspapers you know we have has moved forward in an inactivated platform sinovac has already moved into phase 1 probably this slide will little bit relax all of us seeing the earliest uh, earliest slide with the, um, a big timeline then comes the live attenuated which is little bit challenging because the the reversion of virus should not happen in a live attenuated then a non replicating vector where there is a good number of companies you can see the list of companies which are working on these platforms so there is a quick research which all the companies and the funding agents have started working to move forward in non replicating vector again can snow has already moved forward into phase 1 these things are available people who are interested on to understand the uh, clinical side of the vaccines people can go into these links and you can find more details of the uh, clinical trial plans these are all open for access where people can go into and then check what kind of a trial has been made what the grouping of the uh, people what dosing they are doing all that can be uh, read from the site it is openly accessible again further on the protein sub unit yes again there are a good number of companies you can see novavax sanofi pasteur uh, vaxi bio uh, and then the army institute gsk again we are also working on another platform the replicating viral where zydus is working on the measles vector measles vector vaccine is also an um, a non replicating viral where it is a very good platform established uh, for making vaccines then comes the rna vaccine where people would have read that, that moderna has already moved forward this is was the first vaccine that went into uh, phase 1 uh, trial very quickly they went i will tell you how they went when there is a very strict regulations how we were able to do the phase 1 in such a short time and there are also other other institutes working on some of the other platforms which is not of that clear okay so in my further presentations i will not be able to cover up all but i would cover up some of the four of these which i have already highlighted which has already moved forward into clinical trials so 
how was it possible because when there is a big timeline which was shown for a vaccine development more than close to 10 years 6 to 10 years how was it possible to enter into a phase 1 trial yes here is a traditional path where we first show target how what is my target molecule which takes or to identify itself it takes almost 2 years then the phase 1 which takes 12 months followed by phase 2 again it almost takes 2 years to complete the clinical trial and then submit the dosier and get the regulatory approvals and then going forward to phase 3 and then the life is so it takes almost 6 to 11 years 11 11 and a half years so in this situation how was it possible yes the first one is the moderna's mrna vaccine which went immediately into phase 1 thanks to the regulatory authorities who were also so supportive in getting things moved forward on this pandemic situation because the government also supported the private or uh, the companies to move forward understanding the platform technologies so moderna is an rna driven rna vaccine company which already had its platform in place so it was easy for them to show that my platform is already a safe platform so only the thing is they just needed the sequence of the spike protein as a pictorial image uh, for to show how an rna works so this is more simple you don't need to make a protein you just have to inject the rna the rna goes into the mammalian cells it translates into a protein spike protein and it comes out as a protein in the conformational form if you see this is the conformational form this doesn't happen in the recombinant vaccine which we prepare the protein outside it takes a lot of time for us to make this conformational protein whereas in an mrna or a dna vaccine it doesn't happens like that it enters into the mammalian cell it goes into its post transcriptional modification what it has to make and then it comes out as a spike protein which is more kind of a native form you see it forms a clear trimer which is going to give you very good antibody titer or the functional antibodies which is required antibodies are always two types there is an anything you inject a protein or an antigen you are going to get antibodies but those are those can be just an antibody but how much they are neutralizing antibodies that happens only if your protein is more functional so this was some of the slides which i try to get it uh, from the sites because we closely work observing different manufacturers working on these vaccines so this was a couple of slides i thought i would share uh, as part of the research that is happening with uh, moderna so this is what an interesting slide which i would like to share which is a moderna move forward in phase 1 trial immediately the sequence was published because they already had a good experience in the rna in preparation of rna vaccine in the in these viruses if you see there is a good list of viruses which moderna has already moved forward in different stages phase 1 phase 2 then lot of vaccines on phase 1 so this help the regulators also to easily understand the platform technology and give a quick approval for moderna to start their rna trial so that's that is how they went into their rna based mrna 1273 as moved forward into a quick uh, in a 3 months short time it has moved into phase 1 trial so this is the plan of moderna which is again uh, probably would not be available for all of us to see but if you can see there is a good sign here which they have shown if everything goes fine with the clinicals so july is planned with phase 3 approval it's it's a very short time and one one and a half year uh, a realistic timeline for a vaccine so so as per the timelines currently which moderna has published july probably we would be able to see the vaccine in the market after finishing completing all the approvals and the trials so this is a continuation of that so since they already moderna had a very good uh, experience on the vaccine working with mrs and sars quickly they got the sars cov2 sequence and it had a very good homology so it was easy for them to just clone it synthesize the uh, mrna and then directly enter into the uh, parallelly they entered into the preclinical as well as clinical trial so this was in detail plan of the modernas uh, plan because there was in cohort one arm b so this is little bit of dosing information so people who are interested can further move get into this and then have a read of this this is this is available in the uh, 
NIH slide where you can see what is the clinical plan of Moderna who are more interested to understand about what kind of a dosing they are doing, what kind of the data is there to get published, but preliminary data has come already. So very good endpoint writers have been have been shown for that. So the, the, the molecule is further moving forward with the uh, phase two trial because of the time constraint, people are doing parallel trials. Phase one data has come immediately. They have started a planning to start in phase two dosing. So that they, they study plan of uh, 10 subjects, 100, 1000 for the phase one, two and uh, three. So this is more uh, kind of a little bit um, debate would happen on the number of uh, number of subjects uh, enrolling based on the uh, regulatory uh, pathways. Moving forward to the next technology, DNA vaccine, which is an in vivo pharmaceuticals INO4800, has already moved into phase one trial again. So this was a classical, uh, um, like DNA vaccine is a little easy to make than the RNA vaccine, where your DNA is just synthesized synthetically. Then it is transfected into an E. coli cell, which is more easy. And we do a fermentation process and then go for a purification. So your making of a DNA is not a difficult task because your host is going to replicate because we know all know that bacteria carries the extracellular, the genomic DNA plasmid. So plasmid replication hosts are there where uh, like cells like BL21 cells, DH5 alpha cells are there where you have the um, bacterial uh, host which clearly can replicate. So for here we are only going to make again the DNA. So there is no protein again comes here. So it is again an easy platform. Only the DNA is transfected into the cells and then it has been replicated. So this is more easy. And this is the platform with Zydus is also working. We have did the same thing. So we have done it in the PVAX uh, system. And then we have gone into the fermentation scale. And then we have done the purification. And we have got a very good yield of uh, DNA for doing our trials, clinical as well as the clinical trials. This is how it works. So DNA vaccine, once the DNA is made, you need to characterize the DNA where you do two parts. One can be done by in vitro, another is in vivo. So our target is we are going to directly inject it, the DNA, where the DNA is safe. PVAX is a very well characterized plasma DNA, which is very proven to be safe in humans. So the idea is once we do the plasma, we directly inject it in the animals and then for its efficacy. We can also do an in vitro to show whether really the plasmid is forming the trimeric structure or the S protein that is being expressed, which is very important as part of a characterization part in vitro. So this is a study plan for our vaccine, which we adopted and we have success in all of these uh, part, which I am showing it in my slide. So we have completed all the listed studies here and we are moving forward already moved forward in the preclinical as well as we have started making our manufacturing GMP batches. So this is a published article uh, which I would like to show where um, Enovio has already published an article on the similar platform uh, where the DNA vaccine has shown a very good efficacy data. So people can have a look of this article published in uh, Nature Communications where they have taken two plasmids and then move forward with the first plasmid based on the homology of the sequence. So here they have tried to make the synthetic construct with the spike protein, followed by they have shown an in vitro expression in the Western blot. If you see, there is a, this is spike protein expression, which they are clearly showing it in the, in the gel image and followed by transfection in the cells, which is the 293 T cells where they have done a transfection and the fluorescent image. Probably the image is not that clear in my presentation. Probably the article, if uh, you go through the article, you can see the very good, uh, very nicely cells getting fluoresced with the spike protein antibodies. So this clearly shows the protein is getting expressed in the mammalian cell. So this is what is going to happen when you inject the DNA into the human system. So that is how it works. So going to the titers. So this is very important for us to understand is how, how was the titer of the uh, uh, injected uh, seras when we collected from the uh, animals. So in this study, they have very clearly shown there was a very good titer of the INO4800. This is the same molecule, 
if you see there's a plasmid here which they have further renamed it as uh, 4800 based on the homology of the sequence so then after the injection in the animals mice they have tried to check the antibody response at different dilutions and they have shown very good response with the s1 s1 plus s2 the full length s2 and the rbd the receptor binding domain is very important as i showed in my earlier slide this is the first line contact with our human cells so the antibody against rbd is very important so this blocks the rbd site and then in return it doesn't allows the virus to infect the human cells so rbd antibodies are very important so they have clearly checked what is the level of s1 antibody what is the level of s1 the full length antibody as well as the rbd antibodies so you can also see the endpoint titers which they have shown the titers are good they have done a two dosing study 25 and 2.5 microgram and there was also an empty evax where there is no immune response further they have detailed about the dosing and the serum neutralization this is very important because an antibody response is a total antibody response which yes we need it as a first line uh, understanding but this plays a very important role to understand which is the right dose or the is it able to produce neutralizing antibodies because neutralizing antibodies are very important because that is the uh, that clearly shows yes my vaccine is able to produce neutralizing antibodies so here they have done a neutralization with different viruses you can see they have mentioned the viral strain also the details from different um, uh, countries also because since we are going to make a single vaccine the vaccine should be able to neutralize different viruses since we already have a lot of uh, information coming on the virus uh, keep on it is changing but interestingly uh, i would like to tell to uh, the people that still there is no mutation that has happened in the receptor binding domain so the, though the virus keeps on changing there are mutations that are happening i agree but still the receptor binding domain is constant there is no change so with respect to the vaccine efficacy there is not going to be any uh, issues with respect to the vaccine if we are going to make it against the rbd or the spike protein that is a good news for all of us which i would like to uh, present it here though there are a lot of um, um, information coming about virus getting reward but the vaccine against spike is going to work considering it has still not had mutation in the um, receptor binding domain going to the next platform technology which is vectored vaccine chedox university of oxford i think people would have again read a lot of uh, news is about this which has already come so this is again a platform technology which quickly they have made an adeno uh, chimpanzee adeno vectored um, vaccine where they just incorporated the gene sequence of the spike again and then they have made the um, uh, adeno vectored vaccine so this also has moved forward into a monkey trial this is macacus they have already done a uh, research and an article has already got um, uh, published it's in the public domain people can have a look read very interesting data have come though there are a lot of controversies but uh we need to see uh, we cannot take any kind of a conclusive this is too early to take uh, a call on that but there are if you see the antibodies yes there is a very good amount of antibody with this where you can see the uh, bulb c mice immunogenicity has shown very good antibody immune responses uh, for the vaccine molecule so also there is a very good interferon gamma response also in the bulb c and the cd1 uh, mice the vector control did not have anything whereas the immune responses are there for the um, candidates there is very good interferon gamma response also for the candidate there is both humoral as well as cell mediated immune response that's what uh, the authors have presented both elisa titers as well as the interferon gamma from the splenocytes has also shown a very good response further the monkey challenge study also showed very good uh, neutralizing and 
and the monkeys have not shown any kind of they are shown protection against the challenge virus so this is what it is published we need to wait for some more time to understand more about this molecule it's too early but the research is moving forward to the next stage going to this uh, inactivated vaccine which is a very classical vaccine which uh, people always believe uh, the best one to be used because um, this is very classical way you are taking the virus itself in an inactivated form a lot of our vaccine or on the inactivated is um, more kind of a safe since they then safe we should say that it gives more kind of an protective antibody because you are taking only the virus as such but in an inactivated form where it is no more alive but only challenge here is with the corona manufacturing of this is a challenge because you need a bsl3 facility whereas the platform technologies which i showed in my previous slides are all safer safe because you, there you are not handling the virus as such whereas in inactivated vaccine you need a facility to do it. this is a very good publication got published very recently on science where Sinovac Biotech already made the vaccine and they are entering into, again, they are also entering into trial, phase one trial. So how has this uh, group has worked? If you see, they had almost 11 isolates. If you see, there is 11 isolates from different part of the uh, world, countries, different countries, they have taken the viruses, but they selected CN2, the Chinese strain, for making the virus. So what they did is they did a virus production, infecting it in the hero cells, then followed by the cell factory, followed by clarification. This is a classical uh, way of making an inactivated uh, uh, viral vaccine, followed by supernatant collection, inactivation, and then going for a clarification, little bit of a purification to make it more purer. And then they do a alum absorption, and then they make into a vaccine. They do a sterile filtration if needed a chromatography followed by aluminium hydro, um, hydroxide alkyl formulation and then injecting it so after that th this is a very classical uh, way of making an uh, inactivated uh, vaccine formulation hepatitis a is done in this way so this is a very simple process but the problem is where to grow the virus constructing a bsl3 itself is going to take more than a year for any of the manufacturers to it as uh, if there is a manufacturer who has it, yes, it is possible. Yes, in India, there are companies who has already BSL-3 for a different purpose. But for a corona, how is it going to happen? We have to wait and see. Till now, uh, there is no clear-cut uh, information about an inactivated uh, viral vaccine uh, being done in uh, India. But yes, China has already done, Sinovac has already done this. And the data is very promising and very good. If you see, the, what they have done is the 11 strains has been used, CN2 has been used for manufacturing and then they injected this in the animals, mice, as well as rats and they have shown very good immune response. Again, there is a very good uh, endpoint uh, end titers they have uh, identified for the S, RBD, N is not there because uh, N is not that immunodominant. You can see the spike is having very good uh, immune response so that is more a, a kind of a promising uh, uh, data for us and the titers are good enough equivalent to the human antibodies these are the convalescent sera human antibodies which the group has shown that the antibodies obtained in rats are equivalent to the convalescent sera which a human who has already recovered is having so that is a good uh, news and this molecule also is moving forward the conclusion says that they are moving forward with the uh, phase one, uh, phase two trials are moving forward. So to end with, I just wanted to show this was the classical path, which a vaccine or vaccine manufacturers used to follow, where they first do an identification followed by doing phase one, two, three, which takes almost six years to eleven point five years, but here is your, the new plan for the COVID, which is also teaching us in the future how things can move quickly in making a, a new vaccine or a new molecule for the 
public interest so manufacturers has been instructed to do parallel activities without um, breaking this chain so manufacturing can start but cannot enter into trial till we submit the preclinical data so we can start making phase 2 batches but we will not be able to inject it till we have it the phase 1 data so in that way it easy the process that the waiting period for making a manufacturing is being relaxed by the regulatory authorities thanks for that because that helps us to uh, address the situation uh, the current uh, pandemic situation in a easier way so now we are expecting a vaccine in mananda feared from a 6 to 11.5 years of cycle we are expecting a vaccine in one mananda feared is the uh, good news for all of us and to finally end with my presentation i thought probably this slides is an interesting slide which i would like to sh share it because our these are the list of vaccines which has already moved forward if we consider in december we identify the virus but we are into the clinical trials in within a four to five months of time in different stages of phase 1 and 2 trials so this is the quickest way we are move forward in making an a vaccine so corona has also done something good for us to redefine the path of uh, getting an vaccine without compromising on the safety issues so i just highlighted the different platforms also dna vaccine mrna vaccine inactivated vaccine uh, all that from technologies has been taken into consideration um, for uh, making this uh, covid 19 or the sars cov 2 vaccines so this is a kind of a more so kind of a summary people who are interested can go through it in detail on the each of the clinical trials that are happening uh, for sars cov 2 so there is good happening that's what i just wanted to uh, showcase it here so um, we can expect a vaccine quickly on covid so to conclude my presentation vaccine with different platform technologies are under different stages of preclinical and clinical trials indian manufacturers and government of india are working closely together in identifying the black best platform technologies to develop and vaccine indian manufacturers like zydus candela bharat biotech indian immunological serum institute of india still more companies are there are in different stages of vaccine research for covid 19 thank you so i thought of just uh, keeping a nice picture of from the book plotkin which i read it regularly to understand more updates on the vaccine which is like a bible for me uh, to read and these two pictures are uh, the edward jenner's vaccine house page in the 17th century and this is the picture of uh, was giving the rabies vaccine thank you any questions we can take it up thank you for the presentation sir thank you it was really valuable informative and descriptive you have clearly discussed about the diversified areas of vaccine development for covid-19 now we are moving to query session sir for yeah. the participants can clear their doubts with the help of your broad knowledge in this particular area so my first question is yeah in what aspect we can say that sars covid 19 is similar to previous sars okay so there was an um, uh, uh, we also did an uh, blast of the sequence though it is um, uh, varying with the other regions but spike was the spike protein and this, there was a structural homology of close to 80% between sars and this and the mechanism is almost same and the spike had almost 70 77% homology and uh, we also did a uh, couple of sars antibodies reacted uh, uh, re and the homology is there and it reacts and people have publishing uh, if you see there is and the article which i shown has used sars antibody for doing their essay because developing an antibody takes lot of time but people have used sars antibody to react it with this and it was showing uh 
the functional assay was showing binding. So that also helped us to understand and then show it is it is homologous. To a, it is a close virus. Thank you for the clear information, sir. Uh, now we are moving to second question. Uh, yes. How sure are you that mRNA injected as a RNA is not degraded by RNAs in the cell? Uh, yeah, because the, the immune response clearly stays right. So when we do an uh, immunogenicity analysis, the immunogenicity analysis is done against even people do peptide uh, assay. There are publications with the peptide assay uh, and then uh, it covers up the whole region of the spike that has been already shown in publications. So the, the indirect way only we can show it directly. It is not possible. The indirect way of showing is uh, the sera that is collected from the um, injected uh, animals or the humans. When you do a peptide assay or the peptide array assay, you can uh, see the antibody binding to all the regions of the spike. And major requirement is the RBD. If they can show it against RBD, it's going to be protected. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, one of the participants asked, can we use artificial chromosome instead of, instead of plasmid? Pardon, I'm not getting the question. Can we use artificial chromosome instead of plasmid? Well, no, you have to also see the cost, right? So the cost for doing it uh, using an, uh, a bacterial host is more cheaper. Uh, the cost of you need to also check uh, uh, check the cost. So it, it doesn't uh, it will not be a um, um, viable or the cost effective way of doing it when it goes to manufacturing because you need millions of doses. How will you make a millions of doses of vaccine using uh, that kind of a technology? It's not going to be a feasible technology. Thank you, sir. Uh one last question. It is my own personal question. Yes. Uh, nowadays, vaccinations is the prime option for yes. COVID-19 prevention. Right. right. And scientists are focusing more on uh, vaccination compared to antiviral drugs. So in your opinion, what is the uh, prime reason for this? Why they are focusing vaccination instead of going for antiviral drugs? Is it the cost no. or any other? No, it is not about the cost. Uh, when you see the other antiviral drug, it is again, uh, you need to check the uh, immunity of each and because vaccine is going to give immune response to all the population. When you talk about a drug, it is going to be uh, again, a uh, uh, lot of side effects and uh, you don't know people to people, their health conditions, lot of challenges are going to come when you uh, see a uh, drug. So it is going to give you a lot of other side effects when you focus on a drug molecule. Uh, vaccines are more safer. That's why people, uh, because you are trying to utilize your own immune system, so to help uh, you to protect yourself by exposing yourself to the um, antigen. Since you are already aware of this convalescent sera, uh, the therapies which people are trying. So it is nothing but we are trying to use your own body's mechanism to uh, fight against the uh, virus. So vaccines are more um, safer, easier. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now I'm forwarding this session to Dr. Agustin for vote of thanks. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sorovim. Yes, sir. Uh, after listening all your uh, talk, okay, I'm really proud. I uh, immediately remember Turukural. Uh, Turukural. In the Provisionum. Please welcome. I'm really proud of you. Thank uh, you. Okay, our students are uh, doing uh, wonderful research work, and uh, you are showing promising sign for the whole world who are uh, looking for getting healed from this pandemic disease prevailing now. Coming to uh, coming to our uh, topic. Okay, you started your topic on the strategies for the vaccine development for SARS and COVID. You covered almost every aspect of the strategies for the development of vaccine. You have given the structure, structure of the viruses and what are the various uh, aspects to develop uh, vaccine pathogenesis. And also you have shown uh, various uh, the research institutions as well as the companies, definitely, the youngsters will uh, uh, grab this, grab this information. Definitely, they will make use of this opportunity to move forward 
to do a lot of research in the area of uh, vaccine development. I also thank for your uh, uh, very uh, illustrative informations and the detailed informations, and also you answered all all the questions very clearly. Definitely, the audience will be happy to listen to your topic. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity to speak on the vaccines because I have been in this field for more than 15 years. So I have been seeing uh, different types of vaccines. So it was good. So I'm happy to answer any questions, queries. Probably people can post it to my mail ID that I have given. Probably I can help you out uh, uh, through emailing. Yeah, I also thank uh, Dr. Jaijodi for uh, her uh, the prayer as well as uh, the nice word of introduction. Also, I thank all the participants okay, who are actively participated in this webinar series. And now coming to the last part, uh, announcement. We have participants. Uh, uh, the PDF file of uh, Dr. Thoreville's presentation will be made available shortly so you can uh, you can still you can go in go into that uh, feed, uh, second one is uh, feedback feedback i heard uh, okay you are not unable to download the feedback and it will be available today along with uh, today's presentation okay kindly give your feedback uh, for yesterday as well as today's talk thank you very much for being with us thank you we'll see you tomorrow thank you